In today's video, I'm going to be sharing all the tips and tricks I've learned to improve putting. What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back into the garage and I made a tweet the other day asking, do you guys want to see kind of some of the tips and tricks I've learned along my way in disc golf that have improved my putting drastically? And a lot of you said yes. So we are here today and I'm going to hopefully do my best to kind of show you guys what I've been working on these last couple of months that have really helped me putt. So a disclaimer, if you're already one of the world's best putters, this video is probably not for you. Also, another thing is I've only obviously been playing disc golf for a couple of months. A lot of the information I'm gonna be saying is stuff that has been passed down to me. And with that in mind, if you look at golf, which is very similar to disc golf, some of the best putters in golf all have completely different forms. Same thing in disc golf. If you look at Paul, if you look at Ricky, if you look at Eagle, if you look at Paige, all are really, really good putters, but they all have different ways of doing it. And I think at the end of the day, you ultimately have to find a way that is successful for you. What's gonna make you the most putts? And then there's different ways that we're gonna go into in this video of increasing the accuracy, increasing the power, doing all the things of when you have that form down to really start making a lot of putts. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is my grip. My grip was very similar to my ultimate Frisbee grip for like touch passes. Now, in ultimate, when I was feeling like I needed to have a lot of touch or I really wanted to control the angle, I had this grip. My pinky was up against the rim on the inside. My two fingers here were separated. And then my index finger was kind of curled underneath the rim. Now, I was working a lot with Paul at this time and I was looking at his grip and asking him a lot of questions. And the only difference that he really had, he had two major differences. The first one being the index finger was now more here, and I'm putting with my Brody Roach here, which is super nice for this because it has this nice little ridge right here that fits basically perfectly for my index finger. It feels great. Obviously, when I went from this to that, it had a lot of complications initially, but it's like in anything, you just gotta work it out and practice. The next big thing that he had me do was get this pinky finger off the rim and separate it just like the index or just like the middle finger and the ring finger. So now my putting grip was like this. Thumb was on top, index finger was on the outside rim, and then these these three fingers were separated. Again, something that took me a lot of time to feel comfortable. This now feels comfortable for me, but when I first was starting, felt really really weird. So I'm not going to go too much in detail in this video on the actual form of the putting. Like I said earlier, a lot of different ways of putting. This is going to be more of what I've been doing. Actually, the work and the practice that will help you better. When I first started, I would get as many putters as I possibly could. Get about anywhere from 10 to 15 feet. And my goal here is trying to start building in the muscle memory. Trying to start just getting the muscle memory down. So. What you would see a lot is I would just sit here and I would just rattle off putt after putt. And some people online were saying, hey man, that's not really good practice. You want to step away, get back into the rhythm, make it act like a realistic putt that you're going to have in a tournament or in a round. But for me, at the very beginning, all I cared about was the muscle memory. I'm trying to train my body to get into this position. However you putt, right? If you're putting super upright, long, wide, however you're gonna putt, you need to get in a position of where you are getting that muscle memory. And Paul Yulberry taught me something that was super key, something to focus on early on, is the release. You want to be able to replicate when you're releasing the disc over and over and over again. I'll throw three putts here. The first putt, I'm gonna release it early. The second putt, I'm gonna release it late. And the third putt, I'm gonna release it on time. And you can see the difference in flight. Nothing other than this, the release is gonna change. So my form in all three of those putts were very identical. The only difference was where I released it. And you could see the only where I missed the putt was low on the early release, high 
on the late release and then the, the last one I made. That's the other thing you wanna to try to get to. You wanna to get to the point of where you're only missing up and down. You're not missing left and right. If you're missing left and right, now you're having an issue with something else. Not release, you might be moving your arm over here. There, there's something else going on to where you're having to miss it left and right from this distance. Obviously when we push it back, it's gonna be a little bit different, but from this distance, you want to be able to hit the chain. So, going back to my initial thought, early on, it's all about reps. Reps, 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 reps. It's building muscle memory. If you're new to the sport or you're changing something, like a grip, you're going to have to get comfortable with that. And the only way of doing that is by doing it over and over and over again. Another little tip that all the pros do is they aim very small. They pick a very specific spot on the basket, it's a little bit different from all of them, which I find is interesting, but a lot of that has to do with the release. Are they releasing it flat, nose down, on a hyzer, all that matters. When you look at the basket, if you look at it as a whole, especially when you're close, there's a, it just makes it to where you feel like you can kind of throw it anywhere and still make it, which is kind of true. I can throw a couple of cuts, That all hit, that kind of was all center. So we'll try to get some that, there's low, there's the left one, let's see if I can get a high right one. There you go, high right. So if you come in here, I basically just made one by hitting it here, hitting it up here, hitting it right in the middle, and then hitting one over here. So the target's actually quite large, but when it comes to putting, if you can pinpoint a very small spot, and really focus on that spot, your miss is gonna be smaller. That's gonna be something that is gonna be difficult to do, but in your practices, if you're able to replicate that over and over, continue to focus on the small thing. For me, I normally pick out a chain link, and normally mine is the one that's just set to the right of the, the pole, and it's normally like middle, but a little bit high. A little bit high. So like this chain link, for example, right there, that is what I'm going to try to hit. So for the next, you know, however long I'm here putting, I'm focusing, not when I actually hit it, I'm focusing on striking that chain and that's going to help you immensely at basically having your misses be this much and close in on your misses. Get your misses smaller. That's the idea. You're not going to have the perfect putt every single time. You're going to miss it here and there, but if you can focus on a smaller target, it's going to be much better for you. So once you have the reps down, you feel like your form is consistent at the distance that you've been doing it at. Again, you want to start on a distance that you already were confident in making most of your putts prior to working on your form or the new grip. So once you have that down, what you're going to now do is increase your circle. And this is the part that kind of sucks because everyone likes to do stuff that you're successful at. So right here, I was at 15 feet. Now I'm going to move back to 20 feet and this is going to be my bread and butter now at 20 feet. This is where I'm going to be grinding and working now on that form. And again, this is something where reps, 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 you got to figure out first how to get it there because it's going to take a little bit of time. And again, it's one of those things where the more you do it, it the easier it'll get. When I first started putting with Paul, I remember getting to like 20, even 25 feet, especially 30 feet. I kept asking him, I'm like, how are you able to throw it that far? How are you able to putt it and get it that distance? And honestly, the answer really was, he's been doing it for so long that his body is comfortable with it and he actually builds up strength at that distance to do what he has to do. He doesn't really putt anything differently. Obviously, he uses a little bit more lower body. Okay, he's gonna push off his left foot a little bit more. The more you do it, the easier it will become. So for me, one thing that I really worked on was I got really, really good at 20 feet. And then once I got really, really good at 20 feet, then I moved to 25. And if you come over to this board here, this is something that I use. I actually just made a freshie. It's kind of clean. You can see, this is what I would do. I would do 100 putts at the end of every day. I would come out here. I would you know, practice and all that. But at the very end, I would do 100 putts from 25 feet. And these are kind of separated by a couple days, but you can kind of see 88, 93, 94, 88. It's decent. High, high 80s, low 90s is pretty solid from 25 feet. 
Now, obviously, I want to get those numbers up, but when I first was out here putting from, from uh, 25 feet, I, I probably was like 70, maybe 65, I want to say, were some of my numbers. And so now what I'm going to do, now that I'm kind of in the 90 range, now I'm doing the same thing at 30 feet. So now I'm all the way back in my garage. And again, the, the same kind of thing I felt at 25, I felt at 30. The first couple days, I was like, how the heck do I get it to go that far? So now I'm actually comfortable putting at 30 and I'm not doing anything differently. That's the big thing is you don't want to drastically change your form or uh, your grip or anything like that inside the circle. Everything should kind of be the same. The only difference is, yeah, you might be pushing a little bit off your left foot, but as you get more and more comfortable at these areas, you're going to feel way better at making them. So again, to kind of recap, the first thing you need to do is reps, 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 okay? If you only have 10 discs, fire those 10 discs off, grab them, fire those 10 discs off, and try to get hundreds and hundreds of putts in on a daily basis to where you get the muscle memory down. Okay, once you get that, then you slowly start moving your, your, your circle out to where now I feel very confident at any putt inside of 25 feet I'm going to make. Even at 25 feet, I'm making almost 90% of them, which is decent. Now I'm working on expanding my circle even further to 30 feet. When you're doing the 100 throws a day, that's where you want to try to put a little bit pressure on you. And instead of just sitting here and just rattling off cuts, where you're just getting reps in like that, now take each one as an individual putt. So my first putt, I'm going to do my whole routine. Then I'm going to step off and walk up and do my routine again. Because with these 100 putts, you already have the muscle memory down. Okay, you've already done tons and tons of putting. Now what you're doing is you're putting pressure on yourself and you're trying to see, hey, each putt matters. Every single one of these matters. Let's put pressure on myself. And if you want, you could do 50 and then take a few minutes breaks. Do some jumping jacks or something and then walk back up and do the next 50. And put pressure on yourself. And really have to time and time again go through your team, think about all the things you're working on, the grip, the form, everything, and then execute the putt. The last couple things we're gonna talk about now are kind of the drills and stuff that I would do on a daily basis to kind of again increase my putting ability. The first one being I would actually add a couple things on here. We just cleaned this off because we did that live stream last week. But the other things I would add on there is straddle putts and scuba putts. I would try to get anywhere from 50 to 100 of those every day as well. Just working again on, I wanna make sure that if I have to for some reason have a 20 footer, I wanna make sure that I have the scuba putt. Same with the straddle. I wanna make sure that I can practice the straddle putt and so that when I go on the course, I've done it thousands and thousands of times. I think it's important to do those but at a way smaller reps, unless you're actually straddle putt normally, do those on a way smaller reps and really focus on your main putting stroke because that's the one you're gonna do more on the course. The other drills that I would do is I would do the Perfect Putt 360. If you're not familiar with that, I made a video uh, about that as well where I go through my actual Perfect Putt 360 and film the whole thing so you can click uh, the card up here or in the link in the description down below as well. And then the other one that I would do, and this is, this is a drill that Paul Yulberry taught me, you basically take three discs. You start at 10 feet, all right, I made all three. So if you make all three, you advance, you move back. So now from 10 feet, I'm going to go to about 12 or 13 feet roughly. So now I'll be here. Oh, okay. Wow. I was, trying, I was trying to miss that, but let's act like the last one missed. So I only made two. If you only make two, you stay where you are. Okay, so because I only made two, I would have to go 13 feet again. Now if I go. 
and I only make one, I move forward. So now I'm going back to 10 feet. And if you ever get in a position where you, only, you don't make any, you miss all three, you start over as well. So let's say I made my way all the way to 20 feet, and now I miss all three from 20 feet, I completely have to start over back at 10. Now, if you're doing this outdoors, which a lot of us aren't because of the situation at hand, the other thing you can do is your comebackers. So if I make two, and have a nasty roll away, I have to make that putt. If I miss that putt, I have to start over as well, even though I already made two. After my putting practice, and then after doing my 100 putts, this is something that I would always do every night, and I couldn't go inside to go to sleep and take a shower until this was done. So I would start at 10, and then I'd go all the way back 15, 17 and a half, 20, 22 and a half, 25, 27 and a half, all the way to 30, and then I'd go back to like 34 with straddle putts, because I'm against the wall. And I basically have to do that and make all three before I go inside. Talk about pressure, and especially when you're exhausted, the last thing you want to do is continue to just be out here putting, putting, putting. You want to go and take a shower and take a nap or actually go to sleep. So that was something that really helped me putting pressure on my putts. I think that is key. So once you get the reps down, once you get the muscle memory down, then you move on to pressure putt situations. Try to put yourself in a position so that way when you get into a tournament or you get into a mini or whatever it may be of where you're actually really focused and really trying to put a good score down, you actually have been there before. Because trust me, when I get to that wall and I'm doing 30 putts and I've made the first two, man, that third one, I'm a little bit more nervous because I'm like, I've gotten so far. That is pretty much all the tips and tricks uh, that I've been doing the last couple months. A lot of the stuff I've learned, again, like I said, have been passed down from some of the top pros. So if you guys have any questions or anything, please let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. And if you wanna see more of kind of what I've been doing like behind the camera and, and my practices and stuff like that, make sure you like this video as well. And if you haven't already, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Keep slinging them discs.